Welcome back, everyone, to our Salvation Equation series. This is part two, entitled The Salvation Equation. So here's the deal. All my life I remained in confusion over salvation. Verses in the Bible seem contradictory. Like, for example, Simeon looking at the baby Jesus, and he said, Mine eyes have seen thy salvation. But then the Apostle Paul said, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So what's up? Is Jesus our salvation? Or is salvation something we need to do? Didn't make any sense. And the preachers on TV and in the churches I attended, they didn't help. It was obvious they were just as confused. But then everything began to change one day in 2007. God had asked me to give over $2,000 to someone, and after obeying him, I distinctly heard him ask me, Now what do you want in return? It startled me. I never thought to ask for something in return. But I could feel his heavy presence awaiting my answer. So I thought about it briefly, and I quickly knew what I wanted. I said, God, I want to know your word. I want to know the full truth of your Bible. There are stories I don't understand and verses that seem contradictory. So please teach me the absolute truth of your word. Well, long story short, six months later, on the Saturday Sabbath morning of December 8, 2007, I awoke to the presence of the Lord. And he was explaining things to me about the Bible that I had never heard before in my life. I was told the Israelite story of bondage in Egypt, deliverance through Moses at the Red Sea, and wilderness journey to a promised land was all designed and controlled by God to happen, to be a message to mankind concerning everything involved in us obtaining eternal life. Friend, that story contains all the answers of salvation. But here's the sad truth. The preachers today don't have a clue about God's message behind that story. So I'm going to explain more about that story in the conclusion of this 12-part series. But for right now, let me just tell you, it's from that story that the salvation equation was given to me. And these things are all written down in the book God commanded me to write in 2008. So by all means, visit the book's website and read that book. But for now, let's just get straight to the salvation equation. It's this simple. A plus B equals C. But let me define the terms mathematically for further understanding of the equation. A is some number greater than zero. And B is also some number greater than zero. So from this we learn C in the equation can only ever equal the sum of A plus B. In other words, A alone will never equal C, nor will B alone ever equal C. Why? Because like I said, A and B are never zero. They both have value. So just understand, in the salvation equation, C can only ever be the result of A plus B. So now we just need to know what the letters represent. So here they are. C equals eternal life. And A equals our duty. And B equals God's duty. So you understand? For us to obtain eternal life, there's something we must do, and there's something God had to do. 
And only those two things added together will yield us eternal life. So let's look at term B first, or God's duty. What did God have to do so that we might have eternal life? This, my friend, is the story of Jesus. The Bible says we have all sinned at one time or another. And the wages of that sin is death. That means because of our sin, no eternal life. So God sent a Messiah, the Christ, to live a sinless life, but then to taste a death penalty for sin that he never owed. And in this way, Christ's death sits there available to us as the payment or the ransom for the death penalty we should pay for the sins we've committed. Do you understand that? So for us to ever obtain eternal life, since we've all sinned, we're going to have to have Christ's death applied as the payment for our sins. Then our sins will be covered, and God will grant us eternal life in heaven. By the way, this is the reason Christ said, no one comes to the Father except through me. Okay, so what's term A in the equation? What's our duty in obtaining eternal life? In other words, what must we do so that God will officially apply Christ's death to our sins one day? This is the most important question ever asked. The answer is, we must willfully turn from sin. The Bible has a word for this. It's called repent. And since all sin is disobedience to the Ten Love Commandments, then to repent means to willfully turn from disobeying the Ten Love Commandments to obeying them. It's that simple. So let's go back to the two salvation verses I originally brought up. And now, in light of the salvation equation, let's see how simple they are to understand. Simeon, looking at the baby Jesus, said to God, Mine eyes have seen thy salvation. So which term in the salvation equation is that talking about? A or B? It's term B, or God's part. God sent Jesus to pay a death penalty for sin he didn't owe, so we can receive eternal life through him. Jesus is a necessary ingredient in us obtaining a salvation. So looking at Jesus, Simeon was correct to say to the Father, Mine eyes have seen thy salvation. But now how about the Apostle Paul saying, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Where does that fit into the salvation equation? It's term A. That's our part in obtaining salvation or eternal life. To continually fear God, turning away from doing sin, which means to live by God's Ten Love Commandments. That's our duty in the salvation equation. See how easy this is now to understand? Nothing's confusing at all. Nothing's contradictory. Let's look at a few more salvation verses, and you tell me where they fit into the salvation equation. How about this one? Salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not thy commandments. Term A, right? Doing the Ten Love Commandments is our part in salvation. How about this one? Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. For behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon a donkey. 
term B, right? It was Jesus that rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And he had our salvation with him. For he was only days from dying on the cross for us. Let's look at one more. And Zacchaeus stood, and he said unto Jesus, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I will give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I will restore him back fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. <laughs> How about that? Term A, our part. Zacchaeus was repenting of his sins and proving he was going to walk the way of God's Ten Love Commandments. And for this decision, Jesus said, Salvation has come to this house today. See, Zacchaeus was doing his part in the salvation equation. Pretty cool, huh? So keep an eye out for these salvation verses in God's Word. And if you always remember the salvation equation, you will quickly and easily understand them. Nothing will seem contradictory. In fact, if you find some, share them in the comments section below, and we'll all discuss intelligently where they fit into the salvation equation. Well, all right, we've got a lot more to discuss to clear everything up. We're just getting started. Like, where does grace fit in? And faith? And what about Paul's phrase, not of works, lest any man should boast? and the free gift, and many more things. We're going to cover it all, folks. But next time, we're going to discuss repentance for forgiveness of sins. So I'll see you then. Visit 10lovecommandments.com to get your copy of the beautiful 10 Love Commandments poster. This poster is a biblical masterpiece and a must have for every household and church. Learn how the two great commandments, to love God with all your heart and to love your neighbor as yourself, are a summary of the Ten Love Commandments. Learn how all sin is based on disobedience to the Ten Love Commandments and all love is based on obedience to them. For example, learn where hatred and forgiveness fit into the Ten Love Commandments. Learn the powerful salvation equation, which clearly explains God's duty, and your duty, in obtaining eternal life for your soul. Learn how all of Jesus' teachings, when instructing us on how to live to obtain eternal life, every parable, story, and direct teaching, are based on the Ten Love Commandments. Learn dozens of biblical phrases that mean to keep the Ten Love Commandments, like, be sober and vigilant, the patience of the saints, and, to know God. Learn how your two hands containing ten fingers, and your two feet containing ten toes, are your own personal copies of the two stone tables God inscribed with the ten love commandments. Get your poster today, hang it on your wall, and let it encourage you daily to always do those things that are pleasing in God's sight. The Works of Love One night back in 2011, while the Ten Love Commandments logo was being designed, Gabriel had a vision of the two M's in the word Commandments, changing into the two stone tablets. And the rest is history. The Ten Love Commandments logo was born. Today, Ten Love Commandments Ministries is passionate about everyone in the world knowing the full truth behind God's Ten Commandments, how all of Jesus' teachings were based on them, how all of our thoughts, words, and deeds are governed by them, and how they have all been known by mankind since Adam and Eve sinned. Our goal is to make the divinely inspired Ten Love Commandments logo known throughout the world in an effort to lead the world to the truth of God's Ten Commandments. For this cause, we have printed the logo on posters, t-shirts, and bumper stickers, with keychains coming soon.
and we have plans for hats, beanies, vanity plates, window decals, mouse pads, and more. Unfortunately, to make these items inexpensive for people to purchase, we have to order hundreds of each item to get a reduced per item price. Therefore, there is a substantial upfront cost. So we need your support. If the Lord leads you to help in this mission, we would deeply appreciate it. Please use the PayPal Donate button on our website, which securely accepts credit cards, or send check or money order to 10 Love Commandments Ministries, P.O. Box 814, Hermitage, Tennessee, 37076. Thanks for your help.